Hi there everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is a Motion Quick Tip. Now this tip comes from an email request from a subscriber who wanted to know how to create that sort of type on effect that looks like somebody's texting on their phone. Now this is actually fairly easy to do, but like every good effect, selling it is all in the details. First, let's start with the easy stuff. I'm going to start by creating a rectangle. So I'm going to go up to my shape tool, select my rectangle shape tool, and draw a rectangle across the entire frame, just sort of like that. We're just making a little lower third here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to label the group lower third, and then select the rectangle and go to the inspector, to the shape tab, and uh, let's change the color. If we're trying to emulate a phone screen, then viewing a pure white screen actually has sort of a bluish tint to it. At least that's a good way to sell the effect. So I'm just going to give it just a slightly, slightly blue tint to it. There. Still overall mostly white. Now I need to create my text layer, so I'm going to I'm going to just deselect everything and then click on the new group button, call this group text, and then select my text tool right here. And I'm also going to activate my HUD, which I can get to over here at the toolbar, or I can hit F7 on the keyboard. Now, once I click in my canvas to start the text tool, I can actually make changes to the text before I type it by using the HUD. So I'm going to leave my font at Helvetica because this is actually a pretty good font for emulating text. But I do need to change my, the color of my font to black. So I'm going to do that and then I can uh, adjust the size a little bit too. Here you can kind of see how the, uh, the cursor is getting larger, something along those lines. And then I just start typing. I'm just gonna type my name. And when I'm done, I hit escape to jump out of the text tool and I can reposition the text wherever I want. So that looks good to me. Okay, I'm gonna close the HUD. So there's my text element. Now, uh, it's not quite positioned, so I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. There we go, okay. So now the type on effect is actually uh, ridiculously simple. I just select my text layer. I go to add behaviors, text animation, type on. And this behavior literally does exactly that. It just types the letters on one at a time. But I am going to need to make this shorter. So I'm going to scrub over to maybe uh, make it about a two seconds. So go to about the two second mark in your timeline and then hit O on the keyboard to shorten the behavior to that point and then uh, scrub a little bit past it in the timeline and hit Command Option O to set the end of a play range so that we can just sort of view the speed of the animation. And it's pretty slow, but I kind of like it because you're trying to emulate the idea that somebody's actually, you know, texting this on their phone. So you don't want it to fly on too quickly. It kind of ruins the effect. Okay, this could potentially work for you if you uh, we're going to just stop there. But there's a couple other things that we can do to make this a little bit more interesting, to sell the effect a little bit more. And one of the things we can do is add a cursor. To make the cursor, I'm going to create a, another new group, call this group cursor, oops, or cursor. And then for that, for the cursor, I'm going to go up to the shape tool again and choose line. Most cursors these days are lines. Again, I'm going to bring up my HUD, make sure that my line color is set to black. And then I'm just going to draw and make sure that I draw it larger than any of the letters in my name. And also, I'm going to make sure it's, it's uh, straight up and down by holding the shift key down as I draw. That will constrain the movement. So I'm going to get it about that big. There we go. And I can go to my shape tool here and I can increase the width just like that. You can see that the line has sort of rounded corners, which isn't exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to select it, go down here in the shape tab to start cap and change it to none and end cap as well. And if you're having trouble seeing the effect of that, go ahead and turn off your overlays, which is command forward slash so that you can view what's going on. So now we have our width, our, our, uh, our cursor line, and I might just make that a little bit thinner doesn't need to be very thick. Just move it till it's kind of even with the letters. And there we go, there's our cursor. What we need to do is animate this cursor so that it appears as if it's actually typing these letters on. Place the cursor where the you can see the first letter. And then with the line selected, just move the line just to the left 
of that first letter. This will be the starting point of our cursor. Scrub back to the beginning of the timeline and turn on your record keyframes button. Now scrub forward in the timeline until the first letter comes on and then use the position parameter in the inspector to move the cursor just to the right of the first letter. Then scrub forward again in the timeline until the second letter pops on screen and repeat each time moving the cursor just to the right of that letter that pops on. When you're finished, turn off the record keyframes tool and play back to see how it looks. Now this doesn't really, at this point, doesn't really look like a cursor typing on these letters. That's mostly because the position parameter that we've been keyframing has a Bezier interpolation applied to it, which in general makes the animation smoother. And what we want is more of a jump to each position kind of animation. Okay, to get that, it's very simple. We're going to go to our keyframe editor. So hit Command 8 on the keyboard, or just open the timing pane and hit the keyframe editor here. Select the animation menu beside the position X parameter. Go to interpolation and change it to constant. What that does is keeps the cursor at one position until it gets to the next keyframe. So every time we got to a keyframe, it moves. And you may find, like right here, that you didn't quite get it in time. So I'm going to go back to my keyframe editor and I just need to move this keyframe a little bit. Click on the timeline to do that. So it's a little easier to move keyframes left and right in the timeline than it is in the keyframe editor. Make sure that this button is selected. This is called the show hide keyframes button and then just find that keyframe that we need to move and scoot it over just like that. And you may have to do that with more than one. Voila. When you're done, go ahead and close the timing pane. And let's see how this looks. Okay, now this looks pretty good. We're getting there now. All right, one other thing. Cursors tend to blink on and off. So let's apply that to our little cursor. And to sell the effect a little bit more, let's start with the cursor just sort of by itself blinking and then have the text type on. So I'm just going to take the whole text group, select it, and just move it down the timeline a little bit, uh, maybe just a couple of seconds. And I need to also move the line because the animation now happens way before anything actually types on. So I hit Shift I on my keyboard to jump to the end point of the text. Then I'm going to select my line layer and hit Shift Open Bracket or Left Bracket to move the entire line to the playhead's position. So now, if I scrub forward, the animation's back where we had it. Just drag out my play range here a little bit. Perfect. But now I don't have any uh, cursor here prior to the animation, so I'm just going to select the line, hit I on the keyboard, and now I have a cursor just sits there, and then eventually at two seconds starts typing on the name. To create our little blink on and off, we need to basically animate the opacity of this layer. With the line selected, go to the Properties tab in the Inspector and right-click on the Opacity layer and you'll get a little menu here of parameter behaviors. And These are really powerful behaviors that can do all kinds of great things. The one we want is Oscillate. Okay, So select Oscillate and change the wave shape to square. The easiest way to see what that does is just to open up the Keyframe Editor again. So I'm going to hit Command 8 to open up the Keyframe Editor and scroll out so that you can kind of see where, where we are and you'll see what it's doing to the opacity layer is the square wave looks like this and so it'll be at full opacity here and then it'll be at full transparency here and it kinda just blinks on and off just like we want. Now it is obviously not blinking very fast so we change that by going to the speed and just adjusting that so just give it that much maybe there we go and now we have a cursor that's blinking on and off. Good, that looks great. I'm going to close my keyframe editor. And one thing though is when it actually start typing the letters, it's a little distracting to have the cursor continue blinking while it's actually typing. I like the fact that it's blinking before we type and after we type, but during the actual typing I'd rather it be just completely solid. So I'm just going to scrub in the timeline until that first letter comes on and then I'll just shorten the oscillate behavior to that point by hitting O on the keyboard. Let it 
scrub to where the last letter comes on and then I'm just going to duplicate this oscillate behavior by hitting command D and then using once again my shift left bracket shortcut to reposition that oscillate behavior to the playhead's position and now it'll start blinking again and I have to extend this to the end of the project so I'm just going to grab the end and extend it and if I extend my play range you get a feel for what it looks like looking good I'm Andy Neal and this has been a motion quick tip